This is Randy. Welcome back to The Fish Files. We're going to go to something that's very, very uh, applicable to everyone's fish tank, which is the algae eaters. I'm not gonna rank them from, as we did with the plants and the easiest fish for the aquariums, one through, I think I have 12 here. I'm gonna rank them as the good, the bad, and the useless. So I'm gonna start with the bad. And the bad is first and foremost, Chinese algae eaters. Chinese algae eaters, as the name implies, do eat algae when they're one to three inches in size. After that, they grow big, they start competing with your fish, and when they get big enough, they start eating your fish. The Chinese algae eater is easy to distinguish when you go in the pet store. Careful, because sometimes they're sold as Siamese algae eaters or just algae eaters. If you see algae eaters and it's cheap, it's most likely a Chinese algae eater. Siamensis algae eaters or Siamese algae eaters are a little more expensive, so usually they call them out in the pet store. Now, the Chinese algae eaters are easy to distinguish from Siamensis because you're looking for a checkered or a dot dash pattern if they're too small to have a checkered pattern on their lateral line that goes along the body. So look for that. It's not a Siamensis. It's not a good algae eater. Stay away, even if it's a penny. Now, in regards to bad algae eaters, that's all I got. The rest of them, pretty much every fish in a way is a good algae eater because they compete against algae for nutrients in the water. But a few of them are overstated. I'm calling them useless, but they're, they're I mean, they're great fish for your aquarium. Uh, one of them uh, gets a lot of press is cherry barbs. I don't know why they say cherry barbs. They're, they're omnivorous, they'll nibble at algae, but they are not really algae eaters. But don't get me wrong, cherry barbs are great for your aquarium. They, they I would put them in the top 20, easy to keep fish and very affordable. The males are a really bright cherry color. The females are like a brown cherry pit color. You can buy male onlys. They're usually about three times the price. Plus, it's kind of fun to watch the interaction. We have all the males and females schooling together in your fish tank. Useless as true algae eaters, but terrific for aquarium fish. And here's another one. And you'll find these all over the internet. And I don't know why they say black mollies. All mollies, well, there's two different. There's self and mollies and, and regular mollies, but they're all in the Poselia family and they, they're all algae nibblers, uh, but they're not really capable of controlling algae in a fish tank. So just to emphasize, I brought in some uh, Dalmatian leer mollies from the back of the warehouse. One thing I like about black mollies though, is if you have a lot of green in your tank, they do pop. These are pretty and they're the same species and they won't eat any less algae than black mollies. But again, as far as truly controlling algae, they're useless, but terrific fish for the fish tank. They're live bearers. They'll have babies right in the middle of your aquarium and they're prolific, but they do usually use need a pinch of salt or, or they won't reproduce and sometimes you get a little clampy on the fins without a pinch of salt in your fish tank. All right, I have one more useless, but again, very nice addition to any aquarium. And it is the Neocaridina and Caridina fancy shrimp. They are true vegetarians. They generally eat the detritus from plant matter in the aquarium or in the wild. These guys are so small that, you know, it's, it's kind of silly to think that they would control any algae in a, in a traditional tank. I'm not going to go into some details about the Neocaridae and Caridina shrimp because we have a video about uh, pretty much all the shrimp that are available for uh, freshwater shrimp for the in the aquarium trade. So um, subscribe and refer to that video. It'd be nicer if you subscribed. Okay, the rest of these are gonna be useful aquarium controlling species. But again, do not rely on algae eaters, as effective as they may be, to control algae in your aquarium. What you need is water changes, good water quality, and not too many nutrients. Mainly don't overfeed them and don't put them in too much direct sunlight or keep light on too long. With that aside, let me put in effective algae eating shrimp. And these are the Amano shrimp, also called Japonica shrimp. These are good algae eaters when they get larger. This is a large one. This is usually what you find in your store and they're pretty small, uh, but this is where they get. And uh, they're, they're pretty hardy. So you'll, uh, and they, they do a good job of taking, keeping down some of the little hair algae that starts to develop. So that is the famous algae eating shrimp. And they're also referred to as algae eating shrimp, the Amano shrimp. 
And we go more detail again on our previous episode of shrimp. Those are the shrimp. Let's go to snails. And I have another episode on snails. So there's a lot of stuff in here, so you should subscribe. Here are the snails. I want to start with trapdoor snails are effective if you want room temperature or cold temperature aquariums. And that's goldfish, tanks. You can actually keep mollies and other fish in room temperature tanks, but nearite snails don't do so well. So I want to show you the Japanese trapdoors and they're very pretty. They have a little green sheen to them and they get a good two inches long tip to tip um, when they're full size. Uh, these would be juveniles. And then we have the the mother of algae eating snails, the nearite snail. I have two styles. They come in all kinds of color patterns. They're very good for the aquarium in freshwater because they cannot breed. They breed only in brackish or salt water. So in the freshwater aquarium, they'll thrive. They won't eat your plants. They will eat algae. They will eat detritus. And they won't take over your fish tank with a bunch of babies. These happen to be the zebra pattern. And I have a tiger pattern. These are the tigers. Staying on the theme of good algae eaters, I'm going to go to gobies. Gobies in general uh, as a family aren't terrific algae eaters, but there's one in that family. Uh, in the warehouse today I only had juveniles, which is the uh, pandagara. The pandagara gets about four inches in length. It's very good, peaceful with the other fish, and it loves to eat plant detritus and algae. So these are, in the goby family, the best algae eaters. Again, are pandagaras. Going to another family where there's not many good algae controllers, the loach family, there is one class, and that's the hillstream loaches. Hillstream loaches in the wild live in flat, fast-flowing streams. So they eat the algae growing on rocks, and they have a very low profile because they, can't get, they don't want to get washed away by the water. So they, they can just press themselves and go along the rocks and eat the algae on the rocks in the wild. In the aquarium, they'll do it right along your glass. Pretty neat to see. In our warehouse, the number one most difficult fish to catch. I have different patterns. The reticulated hillstream loach is probably the most desirable for its color pattern. These are polka dot hillstream loaches. Um, so they have little black dots, um, but they all have the same body profile. Now on to the Placosimus family, a subspecies of catfish. There's 4,000 catfish available to the aquarium trade. Plecos, there's about 200. I selected the two most commonly used for controlling algae and scavenging, and they are the bushy nose or bristlenose plecos and the rubber lip plecos. Uh, desirable because one, they are good scavengers and they do eat some algae, and two, because they don't get any bigger than four and a half inches. The desirability of that is it won't outgrow your aquarium, dig up plants, they're a good community fish, but they're still gonna be large and tough enough to handle even a cichlid tank. These guys are the small bushy nose plecos. These guys are only an inch in size and it's gonna take them a couple years to get to that four inch size, but they're gonna be good little scavengers all the way through. One thing terrific about scavengers and catfish in general, they eat detritus generally decompose. And when they decompose, they create matter in the aquarium that algae thrive on. So these plecos, other catfish, compete with this for the same nutrients that algae otherwise would be eating. And in the case of these two plecosimus, they'll actually eat algae as well. Now, again, that's bristle nose or bushy nose pleco, same fish. Uh, and we can go into plecos in general on another episode. Uh, and rubber lip plecos. And uh, this is the addition of the rubber lip pleco or rubber nose. Uh, and if it has a striped pattern, it's also called a pit bull pleco. Rubber lip plecos have a big mouth for skimming off uh, film algae. They're good algae eaters. They won't control all the algae in your tank because they'll eat just as much as they need to fill themselves up. But uh, again, in the Placosimus family, they're a really good addition. They're useful for algae control. Now I wanna move on to the two species I think are the best for controlling algae in the aquarium. And the first one is wild caught. It can't be bred in captivity to this point anyway. So if there's any hobbyists out there that can figure it out, go for it. Uh, these are the Otocinclus. And the Otocinclus 
are from South America. They're prolific down there. They're not expensive. Uh, generally, you can get these under five bucks in a pet store. They will do a great job controlling algae by generally scavenging for the same nutrients that algae wants to go for, but they will also eat film algae. So you'll see little tracks in your aquarium if you've already got a problem. But again, they won't eat any more algae than they need to fill their bellies. So don't expect them to control algae if you have a problem. And last and very useful is the Siamensis algae eater or Siamese algae eater. It comes from Thailand, hence Siam, Thailand. Also has a very similar cousin called the flying fox. Uh, they're wild caught and a lot of times they're caught together. They're both effective. Again, avoid the Chinese algae eaters. We already mentioned that. The flying fox, you can tell, look for a big black line on its dorsal fin. Also, it has a little more gold on the lateral line than the Siamensis algae eater, but they look very, very similar. And at, at this size, I don't, I don't think you can tell them apart. And that is the famous Siamese algae eater. Grows to about four inches and it eats algae all the way through its life. I've never had so many algae eaters together. So I just wanna, I got some Java moss from the back. It looks kind of like hairy algae. I was gonna see if these guys do anything. It's just an experiment. Okay, well, I was looking at it. Who's the first to do something? Come on, please be Siamensis or Japonica or something I said was useful. Yeah, it's a cherry barb that I said was useless. Okay, first guy's up. Oh, there's the Siamensis. The Siamensis going for it. Now the Pandagara. Pandagara just tried it out. Do we have any other guys? All right, so the Siamensis wins. Well, that was fun. And uh, we got the shrimp are still on that, on that moss right now, which looks like here algae. Uh, so all these fish are available in any of your local pet stores, independent pet stores. Um, and our sponsor has all these fish, uh, aquariumfishsale.com. So please go to your local pet store and get an aquarium. And thank you again for coming to this episode. Oh, I want to explain my hat. Okay, so I'm wearing a hat because uh, we have an episode coming up. I went on a tour, actually it was an expedition with Heiko Blair. We're looking for new species in a river in the very southern edge of Colombia called the Anila River. And uh, I cut my head on a tree branch. I'd like to say I was fighting a jaguar or something, but I didn't see any jaguars. I saw some monkeys and we found three new species. So uh, I'm going to talk about that on an episode coming up. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, except for the stitches. And um, yeah, I hope you see that show whenever my producer here gets done with it. I want to answer one quick question from one of our subscribers, English Time. Uh, he knows a little bit more about aquatic plants, I think, than I do. He mentioned, and it's a very good point, uh, I talked about uh, on the easy plants to take care of Java fern and Anubias, uh, and uh, they have rhizomes. And rhizomes, if you bury them, uh, you, can, you can smother them, and that plant is not going to do well. He mentioned it's better to glue or attach them in some similar fashion to driftwood or rock, uh, keep that rhizome exposed so that the plant can thrive and, and actually propagate in your aquarium. So that was a really good point. Uh, those are some fine too, so keep them coming. So those some, I didn't even, I had to look that up and uh, he's right. So uh, thank you, English time. And signing off, thanks again for coming to the Fish Files and I hope to see you on the next episode.